electric, affordable, good looking, maybe even iconic. This is supposed to be the Renault 5. It's making its comeback as a small electric vehicle. And what the hell is this? And what does it have to do with a car? The Renault 5, or short R5, was really popular. 1972 model. It was loved by millions of car buyers actually. And now it's making its big comeback. And it's also built in northern France at the original factory site of the vintage model. Pretty cool story, definitely. And everything you need to know about this small, affordable electric vehicle here with Thomas Nauder Crew in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go with the front of the so-called Iconic 5. That's the name of the top trip. Not Ionic 5. I said Iconic 5. That's the name of the top trim here of the new R5. And in the front, we can see you have this dual face, so to speak, here with the daytime running light signature. Pretty cool. Pop yellow is also one of the retro colors. They are really screaming out colors available. Other than that, you have a really friendly look, definitely. And I would really say a likable look, saying like, hey, I'm not only buying it because it's around 25,000 euros in the entry price, but also just because I love the vehicle, you know what I mean? On top of the hood, this will indicate the battery level when charging, here at the moment showing this five. Then towards the side, we have 18 inch wheels. These ones will be standard and three meters 92 or 154 inches is the length so in the small car segment. You can also get this black contrasting roof, but you can also get it in unicolor. We have here additional red contrast in this top trim and more black contrast in the lower part. And also here these contrasting wheel arches. So we have a very sporty look in the side profile indeed. Towards the rear, we can see that the tail lamps here are in this more like technology, more modern style. So we really have a mix of retro and modern elements. And especially here, you know, the form of the rear end, the angle of that, this is really reminiscent of the past model. And it's very interesting how they develop this vehicle. So usually a car manufacturer develops a platform, in this case an electric one, and then makes the sketches about the design and then adapts the design to the platform on the technology side. This was basically reverse. They want to have the design focus they first did the design sketch and then said, hey, we want to have this one as a design and then make the platform fit the design. Oh, Michelle is, watch it. <laughs> yeah, always a narrow studio here for you. Very dangerous, especially for our cameraman. <laughs> so if you're here around 25,000 euros in the entry price, are there a lot of cost savings for that? And is it then just a cheap car, so to speak? Yes, of course, electric vehicles are still more expensive than the small non-electric vehicles were at the entry price. But of course, battery prices over time supposed to also come down bit by bit. Yeah, at least there are some more new affordable electric vehicles on the market right now, and not only like 50,000 euros and so on. But it's very interesting that here with the Renault 5 or R5, they also still offer features at that price from higher segments. For example, it's not that you would start with halogen or something. LED lamps are also standard for the main headlamp unit. Also standard, acoustic front windshield to get it a little bit more calm in the interior. And multi-link rear suspension, so a more elaborated rear axle than most of the other competitors in the small car segment. And here, different color for you. Pop green is this one called, and it's also the mid trim level. So a little bit different in the front, but also in the sides. Here, not the high gloss black, rather the plain black. But you also have here this contrast in red, for example, and the optional black contrasting roof. Would you rather go for the yellow or the green here? Tell me in the comments. Interesting, by the way, always that they have this Renault lettering here, not the logo. And it's also the only Renault featuring here these vertical lamps at this moment. And directly at the charging station, we can find a midnight blue vehicle. So this is the more subtle color than here. It has a nice look to it as well. So yeah, why not? This gives the vehicle a little more elegant form. And I really like, you know, when it's not red here, but it has this, this golden contrast on the top part. There we have it here once again in the front. What do you think? From all these lights always in the studio, it's really getting 
hot in here, so I take off all my clothes, <laughs> not all of them. Um, but that leads me to the, <laughs> to the aspect that this is also featuring a, oh, thank you so much, Michelle. This is also featuring a heat pump. Battery sizes will be 52 kilowatt hours or 40 kilowatt hours net, so big and small. They promise a range of like around 400 kilometers or 300 kilometers then for big and small. Realistically, probably a little bit lower unless you have city traffic only. Remember, yes, it's not a large battery. Then again, mainly city EV use and it's also not too heavy. So even with a bigger battery, you stay less than 1.5 tons. So less than 1,500 kilograms, even a little bit less than with the small battery. And we have to see in our driving test later on how efficient it really is. This will, of course, be that it has less range on the motorway, autobahn and so on, but more than in the city where you can also get mail or the effect of recuperation and so on. Yeah, I can very well imagine this one here running through Paris. And charging, here's the charging flap on the driver's side on the left. 11 kW AC and 80 or 100 kW for the big battery DC charging. We have a figure of 30 minutes from 15 to 80 percent state of charge. That's what what's they you know releasing so far. Of course, most of the time it will be charged at home. Interesting is that they offer both V2L and V2G technology. V2L vehicle to load. That means that you can charge like some outdoor equipment or something then with an adapter. V2G is vehicle to grid. That means you can also have a connection to your home, to your household, and then swap or exchange the battery status, you know, maybe from your household battery thing, you know, and the car and back and forth and so on. And now I see the next questions popping up. Where can I get this super fancy fake charging cable? It does have something, right? When you charge at night in the basement garage and you have like this illumination and your neighbors come home, like, it's like, wow. This car must be belonging to Hulk. <laughs> now, interior and build quality and so on. First of all, panel gaps look quite good. Then door closing sound. I would say, okay. Here, the lower part is more like this rubber material. Don't like it that much, actually. Rear door handles, already the sound here. You can see they are attached in a hidden way. Yeah, this is even worse than the front. So they didn't pay attention to the door closing sound inside of the doors hard pack however it has a structure and then there's a nice fabric insert this is very expressive yellow thing but you can go for different trims and style and so on here this you know, small galvanized part here on top of the window levers like that inside of the doors no covering but it's also in the low price segment but here look at that interior that that is really fun you know it looks like a very sporty steering wheel flat bottom a multi-sense button for the driving modes on the steering wheel. These controls on the steering wheel, by the way, they are somewhat still real and um, you know, tactile. And this is more like this one button area uh, where it covers more function at the same time. Instruments 7 inch or these here optional 10 inch digital instruments. You will also have a 10 inch infotainment on the right always, but more to the seats first. These ones here, once again, in this iconic five trim really cool i mean look at that with the stitching a lot of individual work all animal free both the seats and the steering wheel and they're also going full circle using bio-based materials and or high recycling up to 100 percent recycling so this is also one of the focus of these vehicles to be really sustainable and not only on paper that's why they also try to localize as many products as possible in northern France and, you know, have not like super long supply chains. So they really went into the details there. And yeah, you can only applaud them for that. And the quality of the materials, here, the seat and also, you know, side here, the, the high grade leather red and the fabric and so on. It looks cool and it feels also really high quality. So I'm really impressed by that with 189 or 6 for 2. There's still some room above my head and look at that. That's a cool idea here. Look at the, the ceiling from the inside. This has this, this pattern, this stamped in pattern and it just adds a little bit more uniqueness to the interior. I'm not sure how you good, how well you can see it on camera, but that's, it also feels really nice. The gray fabric here around. So yeah, that's probably to me the coolest thing, the interior styling. 
how am I feeling here? I mean, I can fit in here, yes, but it is a small vehicle. So for a very tall person, you feel somewhat cramped. It's not that you cannot fit in there, but you feel that you're somewhat limited. But it's more like you sit like in this small ready car or something, you know? So this is here the height adjustment for the seat, that's fine. But then the design flaw here for the back part adjustment of the seat. And this is then here the attachment for the seat belt holder. I mean, what's cool is that they thought about this felt covering here on the back side that doesn't scratch on the seat. But then again, when you want to you know, access the control thing of the back part of the seat, this lever, yeah, then it kind of like overlays with this one so yeah not ideal rear bench also has this cool styling once again more subtle colors are also possible hard pack of course and the rear as well and let's get in so i mean it's a very short vehicle and this is when i'm driving in yeah see it doesn't really fit it might be something yeah where you move the passenger seat forward and then drive with three tall adults headroom that is closely fitting but the legroom is of course the thing yeah but i think at this length it's also not the main focus there is <laughs> yeah i see these time codes coming in thomas in the rear seat with a given time code it's always a way to um to nicely taunt me by our subscribers <laughs> so there's no rear middle tunnel available wait a minute this is even for three people in the rear well so there is official the middle seat with a seat belt yeah, but isofix the outside seats so a child seat use is probably better and once again the quality of the seat materials both the leatherette and the fabric is outstanding now to the most important part of this video i asked initially what is this for what the hell does it have to do with the vehicle and have you already figured it out tell me in the comments if you have figured out it before i i was going to show you actually i would be really interested in that because here this is like this hanger for the middle console and now think about this is a French vehicle and luckily Michel our cameraman he also has a French name that's why he knows that this here the baguette is fitting in here yeah I mean a baguette holder in a vehicle come on I mean it's like this is awesome right I mean and I, I think especially our French viewers will really appreciate that so, um, yeah, maybe I, sh I should start in our next episode of Autogefühl with Bienvenue uh, chez Autogefühl, un autre episode avec Thomas, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I, I'm still like a little bit, you know, I, I had French in school and yeah, I should practice it maybe a little bit more than probably for our French Autogefühl channel. So, um, <laughs> this is just all. Oh, and I mean, imagine you're driving to work in the morning and you could even maybe like, you're driving and <laughs> that could be something right i mean you have to turn on the assistance systems first though you know <laughs> i'm very sorry mrs baguette because i just said le baguette that would be un baguette which is masculine but the correct grammar is actually une baguette la baguette it's feminine so the baguette is a she in french so i'm i'm very sorry my lady it won't happen again yeah Michelle actually told me, so it's good to have another French expert here on location to uh, correct my French grammar in this case then. Bienvenue sur le cockpit. So this is then the cockpit overview and I said don't look at the baguette. It's about the cockpit now guys. No, don't look at the baguette, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, it's all, you always have to look at the baguette down there, right? So this is really cool here though. Look at these contrast stitches, then it's like really like a like a plush. It's more like a little bit furniture design, I love that detail. Structure here on top, although it's hard packed, but with the structure, it looks quite cool. Then you have this integrated dash, one unit, but then this 10 inch screen. You have hard keys on the top for plus minus volume and to turn it on and off. This is in a demo mode, showcase mode. It will be a touch screen here, um, you know, like for the different menu tiles and so on, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and so on. And in the lower part, clicking sound, nice. You still have a manual AC unit. I love that. Also for the fan speed and so on. And then you can see the result in the screen. So I really appreciate here to close the vehicle, for example. And this also looks like good build quality here also with the integration of the vents and so on. More further down below. Well, it's a little bit dark there, right? 
maybe some light. No, I said don't look at the baguette. We're about the middle console now. <laughs> Here, um, electric parking brake, two USB-C chargers in the lower part. This is the inductive charging bit. It's not cooled though. And then we have cup holders. They are not adaptive though. So yeah, or maybe you use the baguette holder also for tall bottles. That might be an alternative. <laughs> and then we have this soft middle armrest with some more space underneath. Oh, that's really tricky to film now. So yeah, there we go. Look at that crystalline ending of the shifting lever. Reverse, drive mode or B for the recuperation mode. This is very interesting, right? And here to start up the vehicle. So yeah, this is a very unique feature definitely. It also has this retro styling in a way, you know? Digital instruments. As I said, these are the bigger ones, 10 inch. And you can also have different stylings on there. We're gonna show that to you in our driving part later on. But here you can see this is this demo mode visualization where you can see, oh, we're going faster and faster and faster. Hold tight, everyone. You remember this paper clip, the annoying paper clip from MS Word introduction help thing? This looks like it a little bit, right? This is, a, this is supposed to be a Renault logo explaining you the functions of the <laughs> infotainment system. So this will be also be the main menu here, for example, once again, in this demo mode. Here, sport modes being able to change that. If you switch it to this race mode, by the way, here also the instruments on the other side turn red. Second interior, here you have this denim look, so this rather blue jean style, both on the seats here, but also very interesting, you look at here, right side on the dashboard, this also has, you know, this nice soft feel to it. That's pretty cool. Oh, maybe something for the kids. You also have these insets here for the middle console, for example, with the pen holders. Hmm, not sure if they're really crash safe when the pens are sticking out that way. <laughs> so let's be very stereotypical today. So alternatively to the baguette, you can also get flowers, like the flower holder here. This would be something then for all our friends from the Netherlands. Yeah, and of course, we Germans, we of course would use it just to put our beer in there. Yeah, most obviously. Alcohol-free beer while driving, of course. You can even get a baguette holder where it says Le Pain C'est la Vie, means like the bread is life. So yeah, that is getting very philosophical now, right, isn't it? And here, by the way, this denim interior, when you have the blue exterior color, I think that fits better because here, when you have the blue on the seats and then, you know, when you move backward here a little bit, there we go, here and you have the blue inside of the chassis that works very well together. So this, I think, is a very cool color combination, blue, mid, uh, midnight blue outside, and then this denim interior, isn't it? So is there any frunk? No, it's not, and also doesn't look like that there would be any accessory <laughs> available, so they put a lot of parts underneath there. Here, by the way, there's also the normal small battery. If you wonder, yes, also all electric vehicles have a normal small starter battery, and the reason for that is that they basically have a separation between the high voltage system and the low voltage system. On the low voltage system, you run like, you know, things that are directly connected to the interior for safety reasons and like wipers and so on and so on. And well, usually on the front hood, we talk about engines. Well, let's do just the same with electric vehicles because there are also some engine facts for you. You have three different power outputs, 95 horsepower connected to the small battery or 120 and 150 horsepower connected to the bigger battery. Lowest acceleration figure with the 150 horsepower version is less than 8 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour. And the top speed, well, it's more meant to be a city EV and so on. Top speed will be around 90 miles per hour, that's 150 kilometers an hour. This is the famous meter or 40 inches here on Autogefühl. Not what you think. <laughs> Let's check out the boot. Here we go. And this is 326 liters and you see it's not quite a meter or 40 inches but not much less in the width and the length here on the lower part is yeah, around 65 centimeters or 25 inches so there we go and just you can see when i put a suitcase in here see this cover you can also remove to fold the seats you grab over like one and two and then you can fold the whole stuff, but also individually. So here, one third, two thirds split. 
and then we have the full length <laughs> an auto fuel and the lowest part here there we go this is where you could for example store your charging cable then again not the best solution because if you have something in the trunk already then it's underneath there um, yeah but what's actually very remarkable here small cars and electric is almost inconceivable then to add a towing hook no one has that they do and the towing capacity is up to 500 kilograms ah ciao ciao luca it's luca de mio renault ceo oh I, I was asking him if he's doing also this rally version for the electric one what? Uh, really? Oh my god. It's going to be exciting. So what do you think? Will this vehicle here work on the small electric car market? Tell me in the comments and tune in to more electric vehicle reviews here at Autogofu. For example, the Dacia Spring, the Corporation Internal Small EV or something of the competition.